but we must go on to collect the facts bearing on the origin of it, both those which raise no difficulties and those which seem paradoxical. Hail is ice, and water freezes in winter. Yet hailstorms occur chiefly in spring and autumn, and less often in the late summer, but rarely in winter, and then only when the cold is less intense. And in general, hailstorms occur in warmer and snow in colder places. Again, there is a difficulty about water freezing in the upper region. It cannot have frozen before becoming water, and water cannot remain suspended in the air for any space of time. Nor can we say that the case is like that of particles of moisture which are carried up owing to their small size and rest on the air, the water swimming on the air just as small particles of earth and gold often swim on water. In that case, large drops are formed by the union of many small and so fall down. This cannot take place in the case of hail since solid bodies cannot coalesce like liquid ones. Clearly then, drops of that size were suspended in the air or else they could not have been so large when frozen. Some think that the cause and origin of hail is this. The cloud is thrust up into the upper atmosphere, which is colder because the reflection of the sun's rays from the earth ceases there, and upon its arrival there the water freezes. They think that this explains why hailstorms are commoner in summer and in warm countries. The heat is greater and it thrusts the clouds further up from the earth. But the fact is that hail does not occur at all at a great height. Yet it ought to do so, on their theory, just as we see that snow falls most in high mountains. Again, clouds have often been observed moving with a great noise close to the earth, terrifying those who heard and saw them as portents of some catastrophe. Sometimes, too, when such clouds have been seen, without any noise, there follows a violent hailstorm, and the stones are of incredible size and angular in shape. This shows that they have not been falling for long and that they were frozen near to the earth and not as that theory would have it. Moreover, where the hailstones are, hailstones are large, the cause of their freezing must be present in the highest degree. For hail is ice, as everyone can see. Now those hailstones are large, which are angular in shape. And this shows that they froze close to the earth, for those that fall far are worn away by the length of their fall and become round and smaller in size. It clearly follows that the congelation does not take place because the cloud is thrust up into the cold upper region. Now we see that warm and cold react upon one another by recoil. Hence, in warm weather, the lower parts of the earth are cold, and in the frost, they are warm. The same thing, we must suppose, happens in the air, so that in the warmer seasons, the cold is concentrated by the surrounding heat and causes the cloud to go over into water suddenly. For this reason, raindrops are much larger on warm days than in winter, and showers more violent. A shower is said to be more violent in proportion as the water comes down in a body, and this happens when the condensation takes place quickly, though this is just the opposite of what Anaxagoras says. He says that this happens when the cloud has risen into the cold air, whereas we say that it happens when the cloud has descended into the warm air, and that the more, the further the cloud has descended. But when the cold has been concentrated within still more by the outer heat, it freezes the water it is formed and there is hail. We get hail when the process of freezing is quicker than the descent of the water. For if the water falls in a certain time and the cold is sufficient to freeze it in less, there is no difficulty about its having frozen in the air, provided that the freezing takes place in a shorter time than its fall. The nearer to the earth and the more suddenly this process takes place, the more violent is the rain that results, and the larger the raindrops and the hailstones because of the shortness of their fall. For the same reason, large raindrops do not fall thickly. Hail is rarer in summer than in spring and autumn, though commoner than in winter, because the air is drier in summer, whereas in spring it is still moist, and in autumn it is beginning to grow moist. It is for the same reason that hailstorms sometimes occur in the late summer, as we have said. The fact that the water has previously been warmed contributes to its freezing quickly, for so it cools sooner. Hence, many people, when they want to cool hot water quickly, begin by putting it in the sun. So the inhabitants of Pontus, when they encamp on the ice to fish, they cut a hole in the ice and then fish, pour warm water around their reeds that it may freeze the quicker, for they use the ice like lead to fix the reeds. Now it is in hot countries and seasons that the water which forms soon grows warm. 
It is for the same reason that rain falls in summer and not in winter in Arabia and Ethiopia too, and that in torrents and repeatedly on the same day. For the concentration or recoil due to the extreme heat of the country cools the clouds quickly. So much for an account of the nature and causes of rain, dew, snow, hoarfrost, and hail.